What is the African value mineral balance? Wow. Remember the doctors before me. They were studying Ayurvedic, homeopathy, and the other one which was Chinese medicine. But I'm not a Chinaman. I'm not an Indian. I'm not a European. I'm out of the jungle. And if you bring me something that doesn't belong in the jungle, you are offending me. You don't like me. Because what you bring to me isn't consistent with me. You see, we have to reconnect. We have to reconnect to those substances that kept our mothers and fathers healthy in the jungle. I went to Africa and I found many, many herbs that does just that. So we have to reconnect. Dr. Victor Herbert doesn't do anything like that. And the doctors of today will tell you that if they take your blood and the blood of a Chinese, the blood of a white man or an Indian, they could tell the difference. So there is a difference. Not that we are better. There is a difference. But has the different been treated? They give you the same thing they give everybody else and every genetic group. That is inconsistency. You don't do that. So, the FDA didn't want me to distribute my products. And I could understand that. Because I understand the devil. <laughs> of course I do. I understand the devil. I even love the devil. Why? Because that's all I have to offer. Love. And they tell me that everything God made is good, but God made the devil too. You see, I make it easy. You see, alone in Christianity, many beautiful things. Islam? I've shared some of the most beautiful moments of my life in Islam. I met Messenger Elijah Muhammad. I met Malcolm many times. I met Brother Akarim Allah and Brother Willard and Brother Sharif. I met Brother Raymond Sharif. Brother John Ali, National Secretary. I met the Messenger. I ate with the Messenger. And the one thing the Messenger said that stayed with me now, today, and always will, you do not curse a dirty glass on the table. You put a clean one beside it. Am I right? And you know another thing the messenger said? We someday have to stop eating meat. And the year that I was with the messenger was 1959. I was with the messenger in Chicago, 38, 37, South Woodlawn Island, where he lived. So, as I look at my life, I'm a product of Christianity, Islam, and Buddha. And do I love all of them? Of course I do. Because they all treat me well, and they all showed me good things. But I had to go to that naked woman in the jungles of Africa. Why? Because she connected the dots. She was the one that showed me that in order for us to heal, we had to use alkaline substance. We cannot use any acids. Right in Washington, D.C., there is to occur two things that I must share with you that is important. Your brother said me, the uneducated boy had to go through some of the most challenging moments with the physician. Washington, D.C., Achilles Straub, sickle cell anemia. The doctors cannot cure sickle cell. Oh, they can. They can't cure anything because the methodology is off the mark. So, Achilles Straub has sickle cell. She's two. Her daddy came and snatched her at the hospital against the doctor's will and knowledge. Took her to Silver Spring. I began to treat her. Three months passed. Akila is well. 
she doesn't have the upper pulmonary disorder, which is the company of sickle cell, which is thalassemia. Am I right? The little girl is playing, she's happy. Why? She's lacking of iron. We all are lacking of iron, including me. So they caught up with us and took the parents to the hospital with the police and took me in a police car from 2010 Kendall Street Northeast in DC to the hospital. Well, me, I'm a regular looking man all the time. I dress like this all the time, but just punky. And I had these punky shoes on. And, and <laughs> I, I had these punky socks on that were bare feet. And, and, and in walks in the superintendent of the hospital, Dr. Steinberg. This is showdown time. <laughs> the boy from the jungle against philosophy. <laughs> Who is this man? <laughs> That's me. They say, that Dr. Sebi, what kind of doctor are you? I said, well, I, I don't know what kind of man. I didn't know we came in kinds. <laughs> uh, you know, I had people when they need help. I, I, I don't know how to be a kind of. But before we get into this very tasteful dialogue, I want to submit to you the log that I kept for 90 days that I gave this little girl on her diet and what I gave her as a substance to reverse sickle cell anemia. She goes through it. Boom, 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 boom. Oh! You did not give a killer any protein. Oh my God! This man didn't give the child any protein! I said, I don't even know what is protein. Because I don't know. I'm 81 years old. I've never found protein. Unless the great doctor said we think that protein is a necessary food. I said, I didn't say that. You say that. But as for protein, Is it electrical? Why do you ask that? I said because the human body is made up of two, 102 minerals and they all are electrical. The body doesn't assimilate anything unless it is electrical. Nothing unless it is electrical. That is how the body assimilates things. Is protein electrical? And if it is electrical, Dr. Steinberg, it has to have a certain amount of electrons per atom. Well, I don't know that. Protein is one of the 19 amino acids, the building block of life. Oh, God. <laughs> I said, I'm really confused. Amino acids. The human body is not made up of amino acids, nor any alphabetical letter like vitamin A that they found in carrots. The body is made up of minerals. So where do we accommodate amino acids in the human body? How do we do that, Dr. Sandberg? Dr. Sandberg, I'm confused. You're leading me in a path that I, it was virtually unknown to me, amino acids. Are they electrical? I want you to identify protein. Nobody can. You can, I can, and nobody can. It's a made up word. Has no place in the human body. And the policy is, you find the highest concentration of protein in pork meat. And when someone is suffering with Alzheimer's, he have an extra protein in his blood. Tell me when protein no longer become equitable. It's something else now, isn't it? Yes. I'll say that to time, but let me ask you a question. 
What is sickle cell anemia? Well, sickle cell anemia is a disease that black people got 10,000 years ago because their blood went through mutation. I said, oh God. Oh, I said. I'm really delirious now. Because we have a brother named De Gregory that said in Crandon Hall that sickle cell was given to us by God to fight malaria. You now said it's mutation. The problem with both statements is that they both came from Europe because the Gregory was not trained by an African perspective. He was trained by your brother and your brother told you it's mutation and your brother told the Gregory it's God. Well, let me tell you something, Dr. Sandberg. It's neither God nor mutation. It's the deprivation of iron probing. And I think that I'm sick and tired of this little moment, sitting here, being interrogated, and you have no premise or foundation. Let me get the hell out of here. <laughs> and I left. You understand? That's a bit of arrogance of this Sagittarius. You don't play with me. I didn't come to be played with, and I don't play with anyone. Now, the second one is, I went to see a lady that was suffering with excruciating pain at Howard Hospital, and my mother had told me that whenever a woman have a baby and she suffered with excruciating headache because of a piece of the placenta, or what we call the afterbirth, is in the, in the uterus still, and it need to come out. Well, I learned that from a little boy with my parents, because it was my mother and my grandmother that raised me, not a father. So, I took my little bottle of Arnica to the hospital, and the doctor said, you're gonna give her that over my dead body. And the ambassador of Nigeria said, I'll arrange that too. I push him out the way I went in. I gave the woman the compound. She no longer had the headache in less than five minutes. She expelled something very ugly. On the way out, the bulletin board read, Sickle Cell Meeting on Georgia Avenue, May 18, 1983. <laughs> the people that are with me said, you got to go to that meeting. I said, are you crazy? Are you out of your mind? I am not going to be able to talk. I am not part of the elite. I'm the boy that doesn't belong to any organization. I'm the boy that doesn't have anyone to defend him and help him. Why should they be the audience? One of the women said, you got to go anyway. So I went. I went in with my bourbon stock and my white pants and shirt and all the doctors in Georgia Avenue and the Sickle Cell Research Foundation building that you may know. I walked up there, I felt strange because all these doctors, they went to school for many, many, many years. This nigga here didn't go to anything. I sit there and waiting because there's a Frenchman from Abidjan who is coming to give us a talk on sickle cell anemia. Dr. Pierre Lander Dahl is the great hematologist in Abidjan. Listen to what this man is going to say. Listen carefully now. I want you all to pay attention because I didn't come here to confuse you. I came here to share information with you that was shared with me and that I have gathered over the years not to come with some lies to you because you are my family. And if I have to dig you in the grave, then I'm not doing anything too beautiful, isn't it? <laughs> 